Hello, welcome to Lolly's Garage. Today I'm going to be upgrading the instrument cluster lights in my 1984 VW Rabbit convertible. This procedure is going to be the same for all VWs made from 1979 through about 1993. If you own one of these vehicles, then you know that the instrument cluster lights are just not very bright. The reason is because VW used an incandescent bulb which went through a green filter to make some green light, but it's not very bright and it's also not very green. It just, it just really doesn't look that good. Some people have commented in my videos that I have very bright lights and well, that's because I upgraded them to LEDs and I'll be showing you how to do that today in this video. Stay tuned. First we'll have to start off by removing the instrument cluster. I already made a video on that topic and I'll make sure to link it above and below. Grab a set of pliers, remove the old lights. Just simply grab them and carefully twist them to remove them out of their little hold. Next, I'm disassembling the instrument cluster. In the clock, there's this green film which I highly recommend removing, especially if you're trying to change your color from green to anything else. I will grab a small flathead, remove this screw, holding the voltage regulator in, and then continue by removing these eight screws. With the screws removed, we can now carefully start prying up on this mylar film here. A little screwdriver can help with that. Be careful not to tear it. This is a pretty fragile component. Remove this connector if you have it. You just need to push in two little tabs back here. It's these tabs right here. And then we'll do the same for the main instrument cluster connector. Push in this tab and this tab. Carefully slide it off. You can remove the heat sink. Carefully pry off this ribbon cable here and this connector. With the mylar disconnected on both ends and all the screws out, you can just carefully pull straight back on this instrument cluster component here. With it disassembled, we are now going to remove these two flathead screws. One and number two. Carefully tilt this tachometer aside and pry up on this clock. With the clock removed, there's two more flatheads on the back. Undo those. Now carefully pull apart the clock. You can now remove these two screws. Those two screws out, carefully remove this. Normally we would have a green film in here. I don't have that in here anymore because I actually already removed it earlier. And this would be that green film that you can remove. Reassembly is the reverse of removal. You don't have to make these too tight, they're just holding the clock together. Take your clock, reinstall it. and reinstall these two flatheads. You don't need to make these too tight. Again, they're just holding in the clock into some plastic. If you're trying to change the color of your instrument cluster lighting, then it's really advisable that you remove this green diffusion film right here. And that's going to take a little bit of effort because this plastic is welded to this piece right here. Even though I'm not removing this green film on the instrument cluster that I'm doing this video on, I'm going to be removing this on a different instrument cluster to make sure to show you guys how to do this because I want to make these videos as detailed as informative as possible. So you can see right in here, if you look right in there, you can see there's a bit of a green film. And as I mentioned, we're just going to grind off some of these tabs and then we're going to yank it out. For that, I'm just using one of these Dremel rotary tools with one of these cutoff wheels. If you don't have a Dremel rotary tool already, I can highly recommend these. I've had this thing for a really long time now and I use it all the time for these little projects. With all of these tabs ground down, I'm gonna grab a knife or anything else to pry. 
we're just going to carefully pry up. All right, jumped out, it got scared. And there you saw the green film fall out. Here we can get a little bit of a better look. This is what this thing looks like, just a green diffuser film. With the green film removed, we can clean up these tabs a little bit here. And now we can reinstall this. These lights need to face this way. So we snap it back in place. Let's glue it. Wipe everything down with a little bit of isopropanol. This is already scuffed from when I sanded it. Now we can mix up a little bit of this JB Quick. This stuff works really well for gluing plastic. It settles nice and quickly and it's also really hard. And now we'll just apply a little bit. I've got my glue applied, let's let it settle up and then we can start reinstalling everything. Reassemble your instrument cluster by just grabbing it carefully, sliding it back into place. Putting your screws back. Don't forget your heat sink. Tighten down these screws. Remember, these are just going into plastic holding an instrument cluster together. You do not need to make them very tight. You don't want to strip them out. LEDs are polarized, which means that one side is positive and one side is negative. And if it's flipped, they won't work. So we have to measure the polarity and mark it on these LEDs now. That is extremely simple. Just grab yourself a nine volt battery, hook up two alligator clips. I have the black one on the negative and the white on the positive. Take it and touch it to these little metal tabs right here. And if it doesn't work, flip it around. And now it works. So now I know that the left one is negative and the right one is positive. Get yourself a little marker and I always mark the positive. So right here, I'm gonna put a nice plus. And repeat the same for the other two lights. Before we install these lights, if you have any tabs like this that are coming up a little bit, you can just use some super glue to glue them back down into place. The orientation of these lights in the instrument cluster is fairly straightforward. On these two top lights, the positive end is going to be the top right here, and on your clock light, the positive is actually going to be the bottom. So we marked them earlier, we've got the positive here, hold it 90 degrees like this, carefully turn it, keep an eye out so that you don't pry up any of your tabs and if you start to, just be very gentle with it. This is all a little bit finicky and this is old material. A set of pliers can also help to carefully install this. If you're noticing that these lights are tearing up your mylar as you're installing them, you can just bend down these tabs a little bit with your finger and then install them. Again, remember install with the correct orientation. All right, with everything installed, if you really want, you can test it out first. It's a simple procedure. Grab the same nine volt that you had earlier the lead to the farthest on the left is gonna be where you hook up your positive, and the next lead over is where you can hook up your negative. Just simply hold them there and tap it and make sure that all three lights come on. Mine do, so now we can finish the assembly and then install it. Grab this connector. This little tab right here goes facing this side. Grab your large instrument cluster connector. Make sure that this mylar is slid behind here. There we go. And then very carefully, make sure that this tab goes through the hole right here. Snap it into place. 
Now the instrument cluster lights are upgraded, it's gonna make the night driving experience much better from inside the cockpit, as one could say. However, I have two more additional recommendations. If you haven't seen my video on relaying the headlights and also on upgrading the headlights to a different type of bulb, make sure to watch those. Those two upgrades coupled with my instrument cluster lighting upgrade have really revolutionized the driving experience of this vehicle at night. Hope you learned something today. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in another one.